Countdown timers are an effective way to drive time-based urgency for your website or app. We're going to see how we can drive urgency with dynamic time-based images by generating those images to email right to your customer's inbox. We're starting off inside of a Next.js app where I already have React email set up that allows me to easily craft my emails, including this one from Santa Claus. We're able to see that I'm able to easily test this out by clicking send, which works perfectly as I'm sending this using resend. But I think this email can be a lot more interesting and get people more excited if I have a countdown for when Santa actually comes. So I'm gonna start off with this image that I found on Unsplash that I'm gonna use as my template. So I've downloaded this image and I dropped it in my Cloudinary account so I can now use it to send inside of my emails. So inside of my React email template, I already have my image tag actually imported. So I'm gonna scroll down and I'm going to go ahead and clone one of these text blocks so I can now start to define my image tag where I can define my source. And that's gonna be that URL of the Cloudinary image that I just uploaded. I'm gonna add a width of 600, a height of 400, and then I'm gonna add my alt of holiday card. And we can see if we reload the page, we have that image. And if I try to send another preview, we can see that it perfectly sent. But as we know, part of my goal here is to dynamically generate this image with some text based on the time. So rather than trying to write this URL by hand with all the transformations that I want, I'm gonna use Next Cloudinary in order to generate that URL. So inside of my terminal, I'm gonna run npm installed next Cloudinary. And to make this work, I'm gonna use the get CLD image URL function, where I'm gonna import that get CLD image URL from next Cloudinary slash helpers, where I'm gonna now start to define my URL for my image, where get CLD image URL, where inside I'm gonna pass in my source, where the source is going to be the folder directory that I'm in, and then the ID of the image, which in this instance is the name that I grabbed from Unsplash. So for me, that's gonna be my email timer and then that ID value. And the only other thing we need to do is configure our Cloudinary account, where I'm not too sure how environment variables work within React email right now. So for now, I'm gonna add a second argument to the get CLD image URL, which is going to be our configuration, where I'm gonna define my cloud and then my cloud name, which in my instance is going to be Space Jelly Tutorials. And if we reload the page, we can see that's loading perfectly well. Now as a bonus, because I'm downloading this from Unsplash, this image is actually really big and we don't need it that size. So I can also make sure that I define a width here, which is more reasonable to maybe double the actual width that I'm showing it to make sure that it's retina. So I'm gonna display that at 1200. We can see that the image is still working well, but this time it's a much smaller image at that 1200 width. But the performance optimizations aside, we wanna actually add some text on this image. To do this, what we're going to use is the overlays property, where we can define all the different overlays we want, including some text. So I'm gonna define my overlays property where here I can add as many as I want, but let's start off with the first one, which is going to be a text property where I'm gonna define my text of Santa is coming in, where we wanna also define our font family, which let's use Oswald, which we can use most of the Google fonts available. And I'm gonna define a font size of 50. I also know that I wanna display this as uppercase so at the end of this, just so that it's manageable to me in a readable way, I'm gonna to add to uppercase, and we can see just like that, we already have some text on our image. But how about, let's also make this a different color. I like this RGB value of BFF, BFF, which I admittedly pulled from a palette generator. And instead of 50, how about let's make this 70. And I think that's looking a lot better. So now let's add some dynamics text for how much time there's left until he comes. So I'm gonna go ahead and just clone this overlay where we're gonna update the text this time to say, how about 15 days and 15 hours? And we'll update this to be dynamic in a second, but just so that we can test and see how this looks. I also know that I want my text to be white and I wanna use a different fun complementary font for this. So I'm gonna use Berkshire Swash and bump the font size for that. Where we can see in front of the Santa is coming, we have some nice looking text, but we have the positioning issue here. So I'm gonna add a new property where I'm gonna say, I want to move this down using the Y value of let's say 50 to start. And then on my original Santa text, I'm gonna add another position property. Let's say for this, I want a Y of negative 70. I generally think that this is looking good. It could be a little bit tighter. So how about we do 60 and 40? And I think that's looking a lot better. So now let's actually make this text dynamic. So we wanna calculate the time between now and Christmas. So I'm gonna say constant date today is equal to new date. I'm gonna say const date Christmas is equal to new date. Where I'm gonna paste in this value where it's just gonna be December 24th, 2023 at 1159.59. Now we can even future proof this by adding a dynamic value for the year where I can add my date today and I can add get full year. But now let's get our time left, which is going to be our date Christmas, where we can use the get time method, where we can subtract that or subtract from our date today dot get time. 
Now to get the hours and the days, I'm going to go ahead and paste this in rather than trying to type it all out. But what we're ultimately doing is we're taking that time left. And first of all, for the days, for instance, we're taking the time value that would represent a day and we're dividing that all so that we can first of all, get the days left. But then we're also going to do the same similar thing for hours, but we're going to use the modulo symbol, the remainder symbol instead, so we can get whatever's left over that doesn't count as a full day. But now ultimately with those hours and the days, I can go down to my text. I'm going to make this a dynamic value. I'm going to say days and I'm going to say hours. And once I refresh the page, we can see at the time of me making this, there's 12 days and seven hours left. But now that we're actually calculating that, let's double check and send this to our email again to make sure that it's working. So I'm going to go ahead and click send. And uh oh, it looks like this time that the image is actually broken. Now the image itself is working inside of the browser, even if I open it up in a new tab, but what's actually happening is if I start to look at the network panel for this image that's loading, and I start to look at the actual content type that's coming through, we can see that we're dynamically getting a different modern format based off the device. And when we're actually sending this through the Google email pipeline, they're gonna cache this image and they might not be able to work with the modern format that we send back to it. So this means we need to actually force a specific format for Google and other email providers to understand. So all we need to do for this is specify the format that we want to send, and we just want to send a JPEG. Technically, I saw that Gmail can actually take a WebP image and convert it to a JPEG on the fly, which might mean that it's a smaller image that it's sending. But anyways, we don't want to mess with that, especially with other older email clients. So using a JPEG is probably the best bet here. But now if we try to send this image again, we can see that it's now working perfectly. But we still have a little bit of an issue where when we generate this email, it's generated at the time that we send this. So say somebody opens up this email another three hours from now, it's still going to show that same seven that it shows now. That's because we're generating it inside of the email template. So when it compiles and runs and it actually sends, it's going to use the time at the time that it was actually built. So the trick to getting around this is to use an endpoint where we can point to a server generated response to build that image and then send it back as part of that request. Now, since we're right inside of Next.js or really any other framework that supports API endpoints, I can easily create my new endpoint by creating a new folder. I'm going to call that API and I'm going to create a new folder called timer. And inside I'm going to create my route.ts file here. I'm going to export my async function called get where the first thing I'm going to do is copy over all that code that I was using to actually generate the URL for that specific image. So including that import and including this URL for the image itself. Now, of course, I want to also get all that date and time information and paste that right inside of the endpoint. And I can probably just get rid of all that Im image information from within this template itself. Now, hiding the time bar here so we can look a little bit easier here. What we ultimately need to do now is we have this URL, but we don't want to just simply return it and the URL as a redirect or something. We want to actually download the image data from this URL and we want to use that as the response. Now, before we move forward, since we are inside of Next.js, we can get rid of this configuration here if you want, where typically when you're in a Next.js application, we can define our environment variable as next, public, cloudinary, cloud name. That way everything just works without that instance uh, configuration. I'm going to define my space jelly tutorials so I can get rid of that config. But I'm going to say constant image is equal to await fetch, where I'm going to pass in that URL. And then I'm going to return a new response object where I'm going to pass through the image dot body from this request directly through. And then I want to define a status of 200. So now if I spin up my Next.js application, I can go to my endpoint of API slash timer, and we can see that our image loaded as is. Now, just to prove that this is dynamically updating every time I refresh it, I just added a date now here, where if I refresh or anytime I refresh, we can see that that is incrementing, but we don't actually want that. We just want the days and the hours, which is going to be great for sending in an email. Now, going back to our email template, testing this is going to be a little bit tricky as we need to have both environments spun up at the same time. So I spun up my email in one tab and I spun up the Next.js dev in another tab so that I have both the email the API, but now inside of my template, I'm going to define this URL as my API timer, which I set up that endpoint, but I need to add the HTTP localhost 3001, where it looks like my process wasn't killed. So it's actually 3002, but we can actually see that that's now loading from that local endpoint inside of the email template. 
Now we can't go ahead and send this like we would our other images as it's not going to simply work since we're loading this from our local endpoint. And rather than having to actually explicitly send this right here, since we're probably going to be sending these programmatically, we can define this as an environment variable. But for now, I'm going to go ahead and deploy this route so we can actually realistically use it. Where I already had this project set up, so I just had to push it and it's already automatically deploying. Where we can see I got an error here and that's just because I needed to go through and actually set up my environment variable for my next public cloud or cloud name. But now on my deployment, I'm just waiting for it to finish. Where now once it's finished, I can now copy that domain, replace it in my timer with my protocol. And once we refresh, we can see that it's now loading fine. So let's give this a try and send this out. And we can see that it's perfectly sending and we can probably even see that the hours uh, de-incremented from the time that we started this. Now, even though our image is now being dynamically generated, we have an issue in that it's now only going to be loaded that first time the email is updated. What if somebody comes back an hour from now and tries to look at it again? It's gonna be the same image. What's happening is Gmail is trying to cache that and the browser is trying to cache that. So if we try to go to another email and then we come back to it, we can see that it never actually reloaded that image. It just sh showed that same image as it was before. So how can we actually force it to send a new image each time and so that we can actually force it to reload that image. Now to solve this, we're going to do two things. First of all, I'm going to change this to a dynamic value. And what I'm going to actually do is I'm going to add a dynamic T as in just date dot now at the end of this. So that any time this actually sends, it's going to send the most recent version of this API rather than Gmail or whatever, caching that endpoint inside of that email system. Next, I need to actually define some custom cache control headers of the image request itself. So I'm going to define a new headers property. And to start, I'm going to add a content type, which technically I should have done this from the start, but honestly, I forgot where I'm going to add a string, which I'm going to get directly from the original image request. That way I can do so dynamically where I know it's always going to be a JPEG, but it just feels a little bit cleaner in case I ever want to change anything. So I'm going to say image.headers.get, where I'm going to get that content type dynamically. Now I'm going to do the same exact thing for content length where I'm going to define the length just to make sure that that's properly going through as well. But finally, I'm going to define cache control where for this, we want to define a series of cache control headers, including no store, no cache. We want to say that it must revalidate and that it has a max age of zero. Now, what this is going to do is force this image request to be reloaded every single time that it's actually opened. Now, again, just to test that this is working locally before we actually deploy it, we can see that it's working as expected. And we can actually see that the difference is probably in those hours between us trying to run this locally versus coming from Vercel servers. But we can even see if we open this up inside of our network tab where we start to look at the headers, we can see everything that we added and we can see this cache control. But once our new deploy is ready, we can go ahead and send this thing. And if we open our email, we can see that it's working perfectly fine. But if we start to go back and forth between the email again, we can see that every single time that we go to it, it's going to load again and again and again, which is perfect because we want it to dynamically update every single time that somebody opens this email, whether it's immediately when we send it or a couple hours later, so that they always get the time left accurately for when Santa is coming. Now, this image that I came up with is just one example of what you can do with this. You can swap out any part of this, whether you want to create a fun one that has Santa on it, maybe you want a little bit more of a cozy feeling with a different size image, or you want to actually get a Christmas tree in there with some ornaments and decorations. Because we now have access to the Cloudinary API, we can now use a ton of different transformations and effects to get exactly the image that we want. Next up, we can use the same technique to dynamically generate social card images for Twitter, LinkedIn, or whatever right inside of our Next.js app. 